Hello friends, today we will discuss density and air wires of a compacted bituminous layer. Measurement of field density and air wires are part of quality control during construction of a bituminous layer. While degree of compaction is needed in all bituminous layers, air wires are important in dense bituminous macadam and bituminous concrete layers. Air wires are required during field investigation also in case of premature failure of a layer or of the pavement. Here we need to know the bulk density of the bituminous layer and the theoretical maximum density of the mix. Field density or the bulk density indicates the magnitude of compaction achieved in field. It controls air wires in the layer and also the requirement of the requirement of field density is expressed as percentage of theoretical maximum density theoretical maximum density is expressed as gmm whereas bulk density or field density is expressed as gmb now this field density can be achieved either by increased compaction or by increased bituminous content in the mix or by increasing the filler content. However, it should be noted that increasing the binder content and the amount of dust in a mix can increase the density but do not necessarily have positive effect on performance of the mix. Increasing density due to increased compaction will increase shear resistance and therefore it will improve the performance of the layer. The theoretical maximum density or GMM of a bituminous mixture is the specific gravity or density excluding air wires. So if all air wires are eliminated from an HMA sample, the combined specific gravity of the remaining aggregate and asphalt binder would be the theoretical maximum density and is also called the rice density. Now field bulk density and theoretical maximum density are used to calculate air wires and it is also used to calculate the amount of asphalt absorbed in a HMA mixture which is further used in determining the effective asphalt content. Field density is measured by taking core of the layer or by some non-restrictive method. Sometimes sand replacement method is also adopted but this method should be as far as possible avoided because it is not a correct method. Field density invariably should be measured by taking core of the layer. Some non-destructive methods like GPR or ultrasonic pulse velocity meter are also in use to estimate field density of an asphalt layer, but these equipments also require extensive calibration. The theoretical maximum density is measured by Rice method in the laboratory. And once you know GMM and GMB, you can calculate air wires by using this equation. GMM minus GB upon GMM into 100. So as I told you, field sample should be taken as far as possible by core cutting machine. To take a core, you need a core cutting machine, a generator and a water tank. Decide the location where a core is to be taken. Place the core cutting machine there. Start the generator and water and then you can start drilling the core. Core may be of one layer or it may be of two layers depending upon the requirement. Once you take out the core, it is important to mark it properly so that it represents the chainage. You can measure thickness in field or you can do it in the laboratory and then you bring all these cores in the laboratory and if the core consists of two layers, use cutter to separate the layers, separate the core of TBM and BC layer. Now, for determination of bulk density, this is a three-step process. First, you take weight of the core in air, submerge the sample in water and allow to saturate and then take weight of the sample in water. Remove the sample from water and take its weight in saturated surface dry condition in air. Let us say these weights are A, B and C. 
then the bulk density is a upon c minus b a is the weight of the sample in air c is weight of the sample in air after making its saturated surface dry and d is the weight of the sample in water for example if weight of the sample in air is 850 gram weight in water is 502 grams and ssd weight in air 853 gram then this gmb will be 850 upon 853 minus 502 that is 2.421 gram per centimeter cube and water absorption can also be estimated the water absorbed by the sample is the difference in the weight that is 853 minus 850 that is original weight and weight of saturated surface dry sample 853 so 853 minus 850 upon the same volume of the sample that is 853 minus 502 and that is 0 0.85 percent to determine gmm theoretical maximum density place the core in oven at 60 degree centigrade for four hours and do not break the sample with hand or hammer you can use either rice method or pycnometer to determine the theoretical maximum density since in case of a core the sample is little less and therefore pycnometer is more suitable than rice apparatus this is the sample of the dbm layer placed in the oven at 60 degree centigrade for four hours and after four hours you will find that the sample has now crumbled down and this is the material which can be used to determine theoretical maximum density that it cool at room temperature and if you are using a pycnometer method and if you are using pycnometer method the first step is to take the empty weight of the pycnometer with its lid as well as its cover now after that you fill the material into this pycnometer pycnometer so that the depth of the material is almost half half of the depth of the pycnometer and after that you take weight of the pycnometer plus half filled asphalt material now, then you place some water into this pycnometer and apply vacuum now vacuum of about 3.7 kPa or you can say 28 millimeter of Hg will be sufficient and this pressure should be applied, vacuum should be applied for 15 minutes to remove all entrapped air from the mixture. And once it is done, then you can fill this bottle with water till its brim. And after that, you take weight of the pycnometer, which is now filled with material plus water, and the, the air which is entrapped in the mixture is completely removed. This is the final weight. To determine the theoretical maximum density, let us assume that small a is the weight of pycnometer with its cover and ring. B is the weight of pycnometer when it is filled with water. C is the weight of pycnometer with asphalt mixture. And D is the weight of pycnometer plus water plus material. That is the final weight. Then this GMM will be given by this equation. C minus A, this is the weight of the asphalt mixture. Weight of pycnometer plus asphalt mixture minus weight of pycnometer. That is C minus A upon b minus a minus d minus c that is the total volume of the water displaced by the sample again if we take example let us say a is 644 gram b is 1526 gram c is 1142 gram and d is 1829 gram then this gmm can be estimated using this equation that is 498 above 498 divided by 195 
2.553 gram per centimeter cube. So this is the theoretical maximum density and we estimated bulk density as 2.421 and therefore you can calculate air wires using this equation GMM minus GMB upon GMM that is 2.553 minus 2.421 upon 2.553 that is 5.17 percent. Now this GMB can also be expressed as percentage density achieved, percent of theoretical density and that would be GMB upon GMM into 100. So the design density, the theoretical maximum density is 2.553 actually obtained density in field is 2.421 and therefore you can say that 94.9 percent of the density was achieved in field. So friends thank you very much that is how we determine the field density and air wires in a compacted layer of bituminous surfacing. Please write your feedback 